Welcome to Postcards from Cape Cod. Today, we will be exploring Yarmouth. Yarmouth is a town of beautiful old country lanes and classic New England architecture. But today, we peel back the curtain and look at the ghosts and legends of this old New England town. The Optimist Cafe is a charming restaurant open for lunch, dinner, and even high tea. Located on the beautiful Route 6A, this adorable gingerbread style house seems like the last place a ghost would want to make home. So this house is locally known as the gingerbread house. Um, however, it was built in 1849. It was the house of Captain Frederick Howes. He was one of the most renowned shipmasters of his day. So one of the stories we've been told is that Emily, the captain's daughter, unfortunately died here at a young age by falling down the stairs. And she is reputed to visit from time to time in a friendly way. Well, the building itself was built in 1849, and we've been told that this space was used as an underground railroad. Slaves hit anywhere between 1849 and 1865, I suppose, when slavery was abolished. So I was down here one night doing some inventory. I was in the restaurant by myself. Nobody else was here. And I'm standing up here, um, right above this cellar, and I hear footsteps. And it sounded like a man's like big wooden, like cowboy boot type footsteps on a wooden floor, and nobody was in the restaurant at all. Well, we had a guest who came in right away, said she felt spirits. We didn't discuss anything beforehand and asked if she could wander around the um, house. So she found herself coming down here. I left her alone. I was upstairs working. She came back up and she said, hey, Jess, do you know you have a gentleman downstairs? But he's just visiting today. She said he is either the um, uncle or the brother or maybe even possibly the father of the young girl that she felt upstairs. She said he wears a long trench coat and a brown hat. And the day she was here, he was right in this area. She said he may, may not come through this panel on the wall here. But that he's no harm, he doesn't mean anybody any harm. He comes, he visits, he leaves. Myself and one of the uh, servers, we were off in one of the computer areas uh, at one of the POS stations. And randomly the toilet flushed. And uh, nobody came out of the bathroom. There was nobody in there. We went to check it. Ancient cemetery in Yarmouth dates back as far as 1698. And is, as the name would suggest, the oldest cemetery in Yarmouth, and the second oldest on Cape Cod. Many unhappy ghosts are reportedly seen here. In 1826, the town moved the graves of all people of color, including all black and Indian people, from the cemetery. The bodies were moved to the southeast corner and were never marked. This land remains unmarked to this day, and legend has it angry ghosts can still be seen looking for their lost graves. In 2005, there was a storm which knocked over a large tree in the cemetery. In the roots were found several arrowheads. Both the arrowheads and the tree pointed in the direction of the unmarked graves. North on 6A is the Yarmouth New Church. Today, it is no longer associated with any religious congregation. Instead, it is maintained by the Yarmouth New Church Preservation Foundation and is used for local events and weddings. Over a hundred years ago, however, it was used for a much different purpose. Built in 1870, New Church began as a Swedenborgian congregation. Swedenborgianism is based on the ideas of Emanuel Swedenborg, a Swedish mystic and philosopher who believed in a much more optimistic view of the afterlife than what was the prevailing idea at the time. He believed that the dead could be contacted here and now on earth. It evolved from a feeling of, um, of the new spiritualism that came about around the time of the Civil War. It was a Christian religion that, that believed when you die, your body dies, but your spirit lives on. Some people are skeptical about um, the spiritualism. Um, Mary Todd Lincoln made it very popular at the time of um, her son's death, and trying to reach him through seances. It was a popular thing at that time. Um, some people scoffed at it. Uh, in England, poets like Blake made fun of it. But um, in, in this particular area, especially with the people like Emerson and, and Thoreau, they were looking for something more with the, the atrocities, the deaths, and the Civil War, and I think this fulfilled it. New Church is not reported to be haunted. However, it does have a rich history with the dead.
Why we think there are so many haunted houses on 6A? You'd have to look at the history of Yarmouth and that it goes all the way back to Stephen Hopkins who had a house here off of Mill Lane and Joshua Gray who fought in the revolution and then finally all the sea captains and if you think about what the Swedenborgians thought that your mortal self leaves but your spirit is behind Yarmouthport had such an attraction to them and most of the houses that are having these issues are houses that were built mid-1800s, the age of sail. It's the same time as the Swedenborgans. Can't explain it. This, this is a possibility, it, it, but it, it's a nice thought to entertain. Yarmouth is a town that in certain places seems frozen in time. And maybe that's what ghosts are. Images from the past, frozen like the houses they still dwell in. Reminders that history is never far from us if we only stop and listen.